Hello, this is Mike, that guy around town. I want to thank you for stopping by my YouTube channel today. Today we're going to be talking to Constable Shane Williams here at Precinct 1 in McKinney, Texas. That is in Collin County. And we're going to find out what a constable is and what a constable does. So uh, go ahead and join me in the office here and we'll uh, find out what a constable is. Well, good morning, folks. We are over here at uh, Constable Shane Williams' office, uh, Precinct 1, Collin County. He is the elected uh, constable, and today we're going to find out what a constable is and what a constable does. Good morning, good Constable morning. Williams. Good morning. How are you? Uh, wonderful in yourself. I'm blessed. Thank you. Likewise, and we're, we're glad you took the time out of your busy schedule to uh, do this video so people can learn a little bit more about what a constable is. You know, we got a lot of people moving into McKinney and Collin County that have no idea what a constable is or what they do because they come from states where there aren't constables. So right. let's start with the very basic. Um, uh, First, how long have constables been around? Uh, worldwide, they've been around since around 1066 um, in England. And um, here in Texas, they've been around since Texas was a republic and under, uh, before then, bef and under Mexican rule. So what does a constable do? They have a variety of things all over the United States. Here in uh, Texas, we're mandated by the Texas Constitution to um, cover warrants out of the Justice Court and to serve all process issued to us and and um, also to bailiff the JP's court. So just to put that in clarification for people who don't know what all the legal jargon is there, um, so let's say I own a house that I'm renting out mm -hmm. and the renters have decided not to pay me in six months. Would I go to this office? Or no, what, what you do is go to the Justice of the Peace Court and uh, file your eviction paperwork, and after that's filed and it's looked over by the judge, then their court staff, that would then in turn be turned over to us for process. And then when we would go out and try to serve the person if they are not been able to be served, file affidavits with the court to get it posted on the door in this alternate service. Okay, you said the JP court, where are they located? They're located in this building as well, over here off of Bloomdale at the admin building. We're right next door. And who is the Justice of the Peace he, judge? He is Paul Riley, real great guy, perfect staff to work for. I couldn't ask for any better. We're very blessed to have them. So y'all work cohesively together. Yes, definitely. So basically people file their paperwork over there, and if the if it goes through the court system in, in, before Judge Riley, and it's found in favor of the person who filed the paperwork, and they want to get someone evicted from their house, that work is then, once it's gone through the process, comes over here, and then one of your deputies, is that right? Yes, goes they will go out and serve it, correct. Okay. And it starts off first with kind of, it's like a notice at first to come to court to prove up your case. Then the, after that, you have five days to file for the actual writ of possession. That's the eviction. And then you will, then um, they'll get on the schedule with the, uh, war, the writ deputy here to go out and actually move the stuff out. But our deputy, of course, does not move the stuff out himself. They provide a crew and he oversees it and makes sure he's neutral in it. So is that, uh, is that civil or criminal? In that nature? would be civil. Okay, so no criminal charges, no one's gonna get arrested. No, no, no. no. Okay, so uh, what else do y'all do? What other kind of paperwork do you do? We do uh, writ of executions. Which is that's, what? That's seizing property to satisfy judgment. You go and uh, file a lawsuit against someone and they don't pay, then they can go back to the court and it's what's called a writ of execution and then they'll go out and an attorney for the plaintiff can point out property or the deputy can ask the person if he has any non-exempt property. They're just not gonna come take your house just because it's paid for. I mean, there's certain guidelines in the law that states that you can have keep so much property, anything out of that scope you can uh, seize and sell at auction, 10 cents on the dollar, but um, and then go that way. What, what other kind of paperwork do you do? We do a uh, writ of attachments out of the court. Um, if someone doesn't show up for court that's been subpoenaed for court, they'll issue, uh, that's called, it's kind of like a warrant. You'll go out and pick that person up, put them in jail or bring them strictly, directly in front of the judge to uh, find out why they didn't show up for court. We do those and then um, there's a, we do writ of sequestrations. It's kind of, when you don't pay your bills on your uh, vehicles, and um, the uh, they'll go to the, the 
bank will go to the court and want that vehicle back because it was put up as collateral and we'll go out and take that possession of that vehicle and store it until the proper amount of days and then and then release it to the plaintiff. Okay, what is there anything else you'd like to tell us about what a constable does? Uh, we're, like I said, our state mandated duties are to take care of the JP's court as far as bailiffing and uh, take care of their warrants and then all the process of the county, but we are Texas peace officers. Um, in the Texas Constitution, we are an associate member of the Department of Public Safety, which is your Highway Patrol, your Texas Rangers, and so forth. But um, we, uh, we have the same duties as everyone else. We require another 20 hours of training per cycle to uh, take care of civil, unlike any other police officer. They do not have to have that. They can get it, but um, they don't have to. Yeah. But we're peace officers. We can write citations, which we don't. We have enough taking care of our core functions to deal with that. But if something blatant's in front, I've told my deputy, if something blatant in front of that's going to harm the public, they need to take action because I don't want them to pass one of our deputies and go down and kill someone or hurt someone badly. That's just, that's not going to happen. Okay, and so so do you work with other agencies if they need your help? Yes, uh, if we hear an McKinney, assistant. McKinney, who, wherever you're at within the county, if they need your help, they can call you up and, you know, because you are actual uh, law enforcement officers, you can step into that role and and a act as backup if need be. Definitely. In the Constitution, it says we'll enforce any laws within our jurisdiction. And um, that's one thing we will do is we'll help other agencies. And we have a great working relationship with the cities within our precinct, which is Fairview, McKinney, Anna and Melissa, and uh, an unincorporated parts like parts of Weston and uh, New Hope and Westminster. But um, we, we have a great working relationship, and if they need help, they know is all they have to do is ask. Is there anything else in final, in closing, that you'd like to add? Uh... No, I'm very blessed to work for the people of Precinct 1, and I couldn't ask for better constituents, and so happy they put me here to be able to serve them. I very much am blessed and appreciative. Well, Constable Williams, we thank you for your time today and uh, for all you do and all your guys do. and. I know that even though you're civil deputies, it, it comes with its own risk, and we thank you for, for putting your life on the line each and every day to do what you all have to do. So uh, thank you so much. God bless you, and God bless your deputies and your family. God bless all of you. Thank you.